Imagine an entire village of people vanishing without a trace, leaving behind only a single cryptic word carved into wood, Croatoan. This isn't fiction. It's the true story of Roanoke, the first English colony in the New World. In 1587, settlers arrived on Roanoke Island, full of hope for a new beginning. But when their leader returned after a three-year absence, he found nothing but an empty, abandoned village. Was it a desperate struggle for survival, a supernatural curse, or something even more sinister that caused their disappearance? Dive into this haunting mystery and uncover the chilling secrets that history tried to bury. In the year 1587, a group of 115 English settlers, led by Governor John White, embarked on a perilous journey across the Atlantic Ocean to establish a new colony in the New World. Their destination was Roanoke Island, situated off the coast of present-day North Carolina. This island, nestled between the mainland and the Outer Banks, was an untamed wilderness, brimming with the promise of new opportunities and untold riches. It was to be England's first permanent settlement in the Americas, a beacon of hope for those seeking a fresh start. The settlers were a diverse group, including men, women, and children, all driven by the dream of a better life. Among them was John White's own daughter, Eleanor Dare, who was pregnant with her first child. Spirits were high as they set sail from England, leaving behind the crowded streets of London and the oppressive rule of the monarchy. They imagined a new life, where they could carve out their own destiny in a land of limitless possibilities. After months at sea, enduring the hardships of the voyage, the settlers finally reached Roanoke Island in July 1587. The island was a place of wild beauty, with dense forests, sandy beaches, and a network of rivers and marshes. The settlers quickly set to work, building houses and fortifications to protect themselves from the elements and any potential threats. They established a small village, complete with a fort to guard against the unknown dangers of the wilderness. But from the very beginning, the settlers encountered difficulties. The island was isolated, far from any other English settlements, and the supplies they had brought with them were limited. They depended heavily on trade with the local Native American tribes, particularly the Croatan, who lived on a nearby island. The Croatan were a peaceful people, and they were initially willing to help the newcomers, providing them with food and guidance on how to survive in the unfamiliar environment. However, tensions soon began to rise. The settlers, inexperienced in the ways of the land, struggled to grow their crops and relied more and more on the generosity of the Croatan. The delicate relationship between the two groups began to fray as misunderstandings and cultural differences led to mistrust and resentment. The settlers' growing desperation only added to the strain and the once friendly interactions with the Croatan became increasingly tense. Governor White, realizing that the colony's survival depended on securing more supplies from England, decided to return to the homeland to seek assistance. It was a difficult decision, especially with his daughter Eleanor about to give birth. On August 18, 1587, Eleanor Dare gave birth to a baby girl, Virginia Dare, the first English child born in the New World. White was torn between his duty to the colony and his love for his family, but he knew that if he did not return to England, the colony might not survive. Leaving behind his daughter, granddaughter, and the rest of the settlers, White set sail for England, promising to return as soon as possible with the supplies they desperately needed. The settlers watched anxiously as his ship disappeared over the horizon, unaware that they were about to be engulfed by a mystery that would endure for centuries. Governor John White's return to England was met with unexpected delays. England was on the brink of war with Spain, and the Spanish Armada posed a significant threat to the English coast. As a result, all available ships were requisitioned for the war effort, and White's attempts to secure passage back to Roanoke were repeatedly thwarted. Months turned into years, and all the while, White's thoughts were consumed by the fate of his family and the settlers he had left behind. It wasn't until August 1590, three years after he had departed, that White finally secured a ship and returned to Roanoke Island. As his vessel approached the shore, he was filled with a mixture of hope and dread. He scanned the coastline for any sign of life, but the island appeared eerily silent. There was no smoke rising from the chimneys, 
no movement among the trees. The village seemed deserted. As White and his men made their way to the settlement, their worst fears were confirmed. The houses were empty, the fort abandoned, and the once thriving village was now a ghost town. The settlers had vanished without a trace. There were no signs of a struggle, no bodies, and no evidence of what had happened to them. It was as if they had simply disappeared into thin air. The only clue left behind was a single word, carved into the wooden post of the village's palisade. Croatoan. The word sent a chill down White's spine. Croatoan was the name of the nearby island inhabited by the friendly Native American tribe. Could it be that the settlers had relocated there in search of safety? Or did the word signify something more sinister? White immediately set out to investigate the island of Croatoan, hoping to find his daughter, granddaughter, and the rest of the settlers alive and well. But a sudden storm forced his ship to turn back, and White was never able to return to the island. He was left with a lifetime of unanswered questions, haunted by the mystery of the lost colony. Over the centuries, the story of the lost colony of Roanoke has become the stuff of legend. Many theories have been proposed, each one more chilling than the last. Some historians suggest that the settlers assimilated with the Croatan tribe, intermarrying and blending into the Native American culture. Others believe that they were wiped out by disease, starvation or conflict with other tribes. But beyond these more rational explanations lies a darker, more disturbing possibility one that is rooted in the supernatural. According to local folklore, Roanoke Island was cursed long before the English settlers arrived. The Native American tribe spoke of spirits that inhabited the island, ancient entities that could control the elements and influence the minds of men. These spirits were said to be vengeful, punishing those who dared to disturb their sacred lands. One legend tells of a shaman from the Croatan tribe who, angered by the settlers' disregard for the natural world, called upon the spirits to exact revenge. The shaman performed a powerful ritual, invoking the spirits to rise from the earth and drive the settlers away. The next day, the village was empty, the settlers gone without a trace, taken by the spirits who now claim their souls as payment for their intrusion. Another tale speaks of a mysterious woman who appeared in the village shortly before the settlers vanished. She was said to be a witch, a woman of great power who could bend the will of men to her own. The settlers, entranced by her beauty and charm, followed her into the forest, where she led them to their doom. Some say she was an emissary of the spirits, sent to lure the settlers away, while others believe she was the spirit of the island itself, taking human form to exact her vengeance. As the years passed, these legends grew in the telling, and the mystery of Roanoke became intertwined with the supernatural. Ghostly apparitions were reported on the island, strange lights seen flickering in the woods at night, and the sound of disembodied voices carried on the wind. The island became a place of fear, a place where the veil between the living and the dead was thin, and where those who ventured too far might never return. In modern times, Paranormal investigators have visited Roanoke Island, hoping to uncover evidence of the supernatural. Some have reported eerie phenomena, sudden drops in temperature, unexplained noises, and the feeling of being watched by unseen eyes. Others have captured strange anomalies on camera blurs of light, shadowy figures, and ghostly faces that seem to emerge from the darkness. But despite these investigations, the mystery of what happened to the Roanoke settlers remains unsolved. The island holds its secrets close, refusing to give up the truth of what happened on that fateful day in 1587. In the early 21st century, a team of archaeologists embarked on an expedition to Roanoke Island, determined to uncover new clues about the fate of the lost colony. Led by Dr. Emily Harding, a renowned expert in early American history, the team was equipped with the latest technology, ground-penetrating radar, drone mapping, and advanced excavation tools. Their goal was to conduct the most thorough investigation of the island to date, to finally solve the mystery that had baffled historians for centuries. The team set up camp near the site of the original settlement, a place that had remained largely undisturbed since John White's last visit. As they began their work, they uncovered artifacts that had lain buried for over 400 years. Pieces of pottery, tools and remnants of clothing. 
Each discovery brought them closer to understanding the daily lives of the settlers, but the ultimate question, what happened to them, remained unanswered. Then one day they made a startling discovery. Deep in the forest, far from the original settlement, they unearthed a small hidden graveyard. The graves were unmarked, the bodies buried hastily, as if in a time of great fear or urgency. The remains were those of men, women, and children evidence that the settlers had not simply vanished, but had died and been buried far from their homes. But it was what they found next that sent shivers down their spines. In the center of the graveyard was a large stone inscribed with strange symbols and the word Croatoan. The symbols were unlike anything the team had ever seen, a mixture of Native American iconography and something far older, more arcane. Dr. Harding, who had studied ancient languages and symbols, was unable to decipher their meaning. But she knew one thing for certain. This stone was not of English origin. The discovery of the graveyard raised more questions than it answered. Had the settlers been taken to this remote location and buried by the Croatan tribe? Or had they been the victims of something far more sinister, something that had driven them to leave the safety of their village and venture into the wilderness? The stone, with its cryptic message, seemed to suggest that the answer lay in the supernatural. A warning, perhaps, from the spirits that were said to haunt the island. As the team continued their excavation, strange things began to happen. Equipment malfunctioned, drones crashed without explanation, and members of the team reported feeling an overwhelming sense of dread. Some claimed to have seen shadowy figures moving among the trees, while others heard whispers in the darkness voices that seemed to call their names. The sense of unease grew, and the team began to wonder if they were being watched, if the spirits of Roanoke were still guarding their secrets. Despite the mounting tension, Dr. Harding pressed on, determined to uncover the truth. She believed they were close to solving the mystery, that the graveyard and the stone held the key to understanding what had happened to the settlers. But the closer they came to the truth, the more dangerous the island seemed to become. As the expedition reached its climax, the atmosphere on Roanoke Island grew increasingly oppressive. The team was on edge, their nerves frayed by the strange occurrences and the ever-present sense of being watched. Dr. Harding, driven by her obsession to solve the mystery, refused to abandon the dig, despite the growing fear among her colleagues. One night, as the team gathered around the campfire, discussing their findings, they were suddenly plunged into darkness. The lights went out and the air grew cold. The only sounds were the rustling of the trees and the distant crash of the waves. Then, out of the silence, came a voice soft, almost a whisper, but unmistakably human. Leave this place. The voice seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere, echoing through the trees. The team froze, their hearts pounding in their chests. Dr. Harding, trying to maintain control, ordered everyone to stay calm, but the fear was palpable. The voice spoke again, this time more insistent. You do not belong here. The team was gripped by a sense of impending doom, as if the island itself was rising against them. In the darkness, shadows moved, figures emerging from the trees, their forms barely visible in the dim light. Panic set in, and the team scrambled to their feet, desperate to get away from whatever was closing in on them. But as they fled, Dr. Harding was drawn back to the graveyard, to the stone with its cryptic symbol. She had to know the truth, had to understand what had happened to the settlers, even if it meant facing the spirits that haunted the island. She knelt before the stone, running her fingers over the ancient carvings, trying to decipher their meaning. In that moment, the final revelation came to her, not in words, but in a vision. She saw the settlers, huddled together in fear, driven from their village by something they could not understand. She saw the shaman, chanting in a language long forgotten, calling upon the spirits to protect his people from the invaders. She saw the settlers fleeing into the forest, lost and alone, their minds unraveling as the spirits closed in around them. And she saw the truth of the stone. It was a warning, a barrier between the world of the living and the world of the dead. The settlers had crossed that barrier, and in doing so, they had been claimed by the island, their souls bound to the land for all eternity. Dr. Harding's vision ended as abruptly as it had begun, leaving her gasping for breath. The shadows around her began to fade, 
the voices silenced. The team, scattered and terrified, slowly regrouped, their fear replaced by a deep, unsettling calm. They left the island the next morning, taking with them only what they could carry. The graveyard was reburied, the stone left untouched. Dr. Harding knew that the mystery of Roanoke could never be fully solved, that some truths were too terrible to be uncovered. The island had claimed its secrets, and it would keep them, forever hidden beneath the soil and the trees. As they sailed away from Roanoke, Dr. Harding looked back at the island one last time. The sun was rising, casting a golden light over the land. It was beautiful, peaceful, but she knew that the peace was an illusion, that beneath the surface, the spirits still lingered, guarding the truth of what had happened to the lost colony. The vanished village of Roanoke remains one of the greatest mysteries in American history, a tale of survival, of mystery, and of the supernatural. It is a story that reminds us that some mysteries may never be solved, and that some chapters of history may remain forever frozen in time, buried beneath the earth, waiting for the day when they might finally be uncovered.